Do you know how long cows should be milked? The same way short cows are. What is this number? After doing the addition, do you divide next or do you multiply next? When we use multiple operations together, whether it's in English or in math, the expression can get confusing, unclear, or even ambiguous. In the beginning student language, however, there is only one simple way to combine operations, and there is never any ambiguity as to which operations apply to which inputs. The key is to use exactly one pair of parentheses for each operation, whether the operation is milking or dividing. To get more used to this, let's look at the following arithmetic problem. At the market, I bought three pairs for 80 cents each, five kiwis for 60 cents each, a bottle of juice for $4, and two milkfish for $3 each. How much money did I spend in total? To solve this problem, let's feed these numbers to some operations. If we multiply 3 and 0.8 together, we get the total amount that I spent on pairs. If I multiply 5 and 0.6 together, we get the total amount that I spent on kiwis. Note that every time we want to multiply, I draw a bubble around what to multiply and I write inside the bubble our symbol for multiplication. Now, I only bought one bottle of juice, so we don't need to multiply 4, so I'm not going to draw a bubble around 4. We do want to multiply 2 and 3 to get the total amount I spent on milk fish. Finally, let's add these subtotals together to get my total expense. Again, I draw a bubble around all the things I want to operate on, there are 4 this time, but I write a symbol for addition inside this bubble. This is how we multiply numbers in the beginning student language. This is how we add numbers in the beginning student language. This is how we milk cows in the beginning student language. This is how we do everything in the beginning student language. We always draw a bubble around what we want to operate on and write the operation inside the bubble. Except, bubbles can be cumbersome to draw, and when our formulas get big, there won't be room for all of them. So instead of a whole bubble, we're only going to draw the left edge and the right edge. According to legend, a long, long time ago, the beginning student language was made of all those bubbles. But the gods grew quite scared of how clear and unambiguous these bubbles were. So Zeus, the god of the sky, grabbed his lightning bolts and said, I'll split them right down the middle, gonna cut them right up in half. And then storm clouds gathered above into great balls of fire, and then fire shot down from the sky in bolts like shining blades of a knife and it ripped right through the bubbles and that's the origin of the parentheses. So whenever you see a pair of parentheses in the beginning student language, I want you to imagine that their tips grow until they touch each other and form a bubble. And when you type an open paren, I want you to imagine that its tips grow and seek out the matching closing paren that you eventually type. Dr. Racket helps you visualize these bubbles in three ways. First, every time you type a closing paren, Dr. Racket highlights the bubble you just completed in gray. That's a chance for you to double check that you mean to group those things together in the bubble and feed them to the operation named at the beginning of the bubble. For example, right now would be a good time for me to check that I mean to multiply 3 and 0.8. Um, yeah, that's the subtotal of how much I spent on the pairs. And then, right now would be a good time for me to check that I mean to multiply 5 and 0.6. That's the kiwis. Actually, whenever the blinking cursor is located to the right of a closing paren or to the left of an opening paren, Dr. Racket highlights the entire bubble in gray. So a good way to understand existing code is to move the cursor around and make sense of each bubble that appears. So for example, this bubble 
makes sense because it's a subtotal for milkfish. And this big bubble makes sense because it's a total of four subtotals. We're going to see in a minute how this gray highlighting helps us debug our code. Second, every time you hit enter to make a new line, Dr. Racket helps you indent the next item in the bubble you're making so that it lines up horizontally with the previous items in the bubble. For example, when I hit enter just now, the reason Dr. Racket automatically put this Kiwi subtotal here instead of here or here is that the left edge of the Kiwi subtotal should line up with the left edge with the pair subtotal. And if I keep adding lines to the bubble, all the subtotals, which is to say all the items in the bubble I'm building should line up on the left. But if I break the line in this inner bubble, then the point 6 is going to move to line up with the 5 on the left. Not to here, not to here. You can also hit tab to re-indent automatically. This automatic indentation is super handy, but it only works if you parenthesize your code correctly. So if you find that you keep disagreeing with Dr. Racket about how to indent the new lines you're making, like if you keep having to add spaces or delete spaces after you hit enter in order to go where you want to go, then check your parentheses. Again, we're going to see in a minute how this automatic indentation helps us debug Third, as a last resort, if you have a mismatched parenthesis in your code, Dr. Racket highlights it in pink. However, the parenthesis that is pink may be very far from where your actual mistake is. Let's look at some examples of common mistakes. Sometimes our closing parentheses are too many or too early. For example, suppose I'm solving the same shopping problem as before, and here my fingers slip and I type an extra closing paren. How would I notice my mistake? Well, first I should notice that the gray highlighting is suspicious. I'm not done with the addition bubble yet and Dr. Racket tells me that I just closed it. Second, suppose I decide to make a new line at this point so that I can have some extra room for the Kiwi part of my calculation, the second subtotal. So when I hit enter, I would expect Dr. Racket to put my cursor here so that my Kiwi subtotal would line up with my pair subtotal, but instead Dr. Racket put my cursor here as if I were done with the addition. Third, if I remain oblivious to these red flags and just keep on typing, then when I get to the end of my formula and try to close the addition where I should, I get this pink highlighting because there's really no open paren for that closing paren to match anymore. The pink highlighting tells me that something is definitely wrong even though the place I need to fix is not where the pink is, but before, here. Sometimes our closing parentheses are too few or too late. For example, suppose I'm solving the same shopping problem as before, but here I forget to close the multiplication. Instead, I just move on to my Kiwi subtotal. How would I notice my mistake then? Again, I should raise my eyebrows at the gray highlighting because when I close my parentheses eventually, I'll get this bubble that multiplies together way too many numbers, including a whole bunch of dollar amounts. And that doesn't make sense. Secondly, the automatic indentation should also clue me in that something has gone wrong because suppose I decide to put each subsequent subtotal on a separate line, then they should all line up with the first subtotal, but instead the automatic indentation puts them all too far to the right. Here's another example. Let's go back to the correct formula for the total. Suppose we're happy with this formula and we want to define this total amount as a constant. 
So at the beginning, we put open define and the name of our new variable total. But then what often happens is we forget to close the define we just opened. If we just move the cursor to the end of the line, there is gray highlighting for the addition, but not for the define. So that's one way to see that something's amiss. And if we now want to make another definition, like for a separate shopping trip, when we hit enter to go to the next line, Dr. Racket puts the cursor too far to the right because it doesn't think we're done with the first definition yet. We need to close one definition before starting the next because definitions can't go inside anything else in the beginning student language. So again, if you find yourself fighting Dr. Racket over indentation, then check your parentheses. Now, some of us have picked up a bad habit, which is to keep typing closing parents until they turn pink and then stop right there. This is a bad habit if you mindlessly close bubbles without thinking about what they mean. For example, let's start with the correct total formula again. And suppose that it turns out that I actually bought two bottles of juice. So I want to change the formula to multiply the $4 by two. I could go in front of the $4 and type open times space two space, but then I need to close the bubble I just opened. If I don't think about how far the new multiplication should extend, and I just go to the end of the line and keep closing until Dr. Racket turns pink, then I've made a mistake. I'm now multiplying too many numbers together, including two dollar amounts, which doesn't make sense. Similarly, some of you working on a bicycle animation might feel that your bicycle is too small. So let's say you decide to scale up the bicycle image by two. At this point, if you don't think about how far the scaling should extend and you just go to the end of the formula and keep closing until Dr. Racket turns pink, then you'll end up giving way too many inputs to the scale function and way too few inputs to the place image function. You can make the problem visible either using the gray highlighting by hitting left or using the automatic indentation by hitting tab.